right? So point oh six two five. Of means multiply. multiply. What? X. X. I love it. Because in algebra, if I don't know it, I pretend like I do. I say it's X. There you go. Just so I have something to put there instead of a blank space. And now, you know, when you do it this way, when you convert it to an equation, you're one step away from being done. Always. Is your X by itself? What do I have to do? Divide Yeah. Uh, in case you're worried, I'm not going to make you do that by hand. That would be truly disgusting. So you just do that in the calculator. I don't know what's going on. Sounds about right. One, two, two. Yep. 11.52. Victoria at all, but when she first told me the answer was 11.52, how did I kind of figure out that that couldn't possibly be right? What's six percent of a hundred? And this is a really good question because that's the whole idea of a percentage. What's six percent of a hundred? Six. Because what does six percent mean? Six out of hundred. All right. So now, if I ask a percentage of a hundred, that's the easiest question in the world because percentages are based out of a hundred. So 6% of 100 is 6. So this is saying a little more than 6% of what is 7. So it's got to be at least 100. My answer has got to be at least 100. 6% of 100 is 6. To make 6% of something be 7.2, it's got to be more than 100. That answer makes sense. 11 didn't make sense. That's not big enough. Cool. I almost had you fold. You almost did. This is too early. 39. They're done. I got one answer in the book, got another answer. The book is wrong sometimes. The book's always wrong. Now, whether you and I agree, that's another story. This is the one that's really nice because when you set it up into an equation, you're, you're basically done. Um, to go to the next step, what do I have to do with this? With the decimal. With the decimal where? Yeah. Let me try this. I tried that DP thing. I don't think people really like that. D, if you want to go to decimal, you move the decimal down. D down. How's that? If you want to go to a decimal, you move it down. If you want to go to a percent, you move it up. <laughs> I'm just trying. Up, down. Is that? Yeah. Don't need a shower. Yeah, you got a, 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 a yellow line up here. You're in the splash zone, buddy. Great. <laughs> so if I want to move it to, a, if I want to make it a decimal, I move the decimal down. If I want to make it a percentage, I move it up. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Let's try. Oh. You mean? Up, down. Because think about like a, a number line. Right. One, two, positive, oh. negative. If I want to move up, I'm going to move that way. If I want to move down, I'm going to move that way. How's that? Not mystically the method. Yeah, whatever makes sense, cling to that. If that makes sense, cling to it. So I feel like if you move the decimal to the right the way you're saying it, it makes the number bigger, doesn't it? No, I want to move it down. No, no, no. Right. Right. So if you move it to the left, you move it, you want percentage, right? That's why to the left. So it's currently a percent. To make it into a decimal, I have to make the number smaller. So if you want to the left. So I'm going down once, twice. Okay. 
Because the whole problem with percentages and decimals is which direction do I go? We know it's two steps because it's based out of 100. I know it's two steps. It's just which freaking way do I go? Another thing I said earlier was a decimal number will always be smaller than the percentage number. That's 2.4, that's 0.024, that makes sense. The decimal number actually does the division by 100. A percentage just says, oh yeah, I gotta divide by 100 something. That's what that symbol means. So the decimal is always gonna be smaller because it's actually gonna do that division. The percentage doesn't do it. It just says here, you gotta divide by 100 sometime. Okay, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's very strange. Of means <laughs> multiply. So of 26 is what? Yeah, see, so that's an awesome one. The equation solved. You just have to do that multiplication. Trying to do that by hand? Yes. I appreciate that. You put your work. Uh, you don't yes. I did all of them by hand. That's awesome. You got great practice. <laughs> so, you know, on this test, I'll have a section where you've got to do stuff by hand. <laughs> and then when we get into this kind of stuff where you're solving, dividing by 625, not the easiest thing in the world to do. I'm much more interested in are you able to solve this equation than. You know, I'll have a different section that you can show me that you're able to divide and multiply. Okay, so what do you guys get when you do that? Uh, 6.24. 6. Okay, you got it. 0.6. Yeah. 0.6. Sounds a little better. And real quick, let me show you something kind of cool. Um, what's 10% of uh, 26. What's 10% of 26? 2.6. Is that cool? Is everybody cool with that? 10% of something is easy. You just make the decimal move once. 10% is the same thing as 1 tenth. Where the hell did I get that from? Cool that. I might know what What's 10% as a fraction? 10 over 100. So that's 1 tenth. You with me? And one tenth of something will make it go down by a factor of 10. It'll make the decimal move once back. So 10% of something is easy. So 10% of 26 is 2.6. So what's 5% of 26 then? Let me see if anybody can do it. 1.3. Bam. No calculator needed. If 10% of 26 is 2.6, half of that must be half of this. 1.3. So one thing you could do if you had a $26 bill in a restaurant, $26 you gotta pay, how much you wanna tip, 2.6 plus 1.3 is 3.9, that's 15%. Crazy. Or you just look at the bottom of the damn thing and it tells you stupid. Nobody gets practice in math anymore because everything tells you. The change comes out, the stupid thing tells you. Uh, but I'll, I'll be okay. Do you guys kinda get that? I can build percentages based on 10%. So let me do another one. 10% of 26 is 2.6. What's 1% of 26? Point. Point 0.26. You just move it again. Semi with me? Yeah. Semi with me. So then what's 2% of 26? Point. 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 Double this. I really want you guys with me. So yeah, you can play around with the percentage. 10% moves it once back. 1% moves it once back again. 2% you would double this. If 1% of this is 0.26, 2% must be twice that. So then what's... So look over here. Why am I doing this? This asks me for 2.4% of 26. It should be close to 0.52. Because 2% of 26 is 0.52. And what do we get? 0.624, it makes sense. Because is it 2%? No, it's a little bit bigger. It's 2.4%. So it should be a little bit higher than this. So I'm trying to show you ways you can really check to see if your answer makes sense. Because it's very easy to lose a decimal place. So I heard an answer of 6.24, and I want to show you why that doesn't make any sense. It's a very small percentage of a relatively small number. The answer should be small. Yeah. 
No, it's 0.625. <coughs> that answer makes sense because 2% would be 0.52. So a little more than 2% is a little more than 0.52. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. Oh, cool. cool. <coughs> All right. So any other questions from homework? Any other questions? I'm sure the waiters and waitresses out there appreciate that they put the tips on the bottom of the game receipts nowadays. I don't. Curmudgeonly, old math teacher? Not yet, but yeah, we're getting close. So I just love when people have to are forced to do math. Either the people at the table eating, normally at the five bucks for a bunch of water dollar meal, or the waiters going, is they just screw me over? But now you just look at the bottom of the damn thing, you don't have to do any math. Yes. But I'll give up. Alright, so any anything else for homework? Before we get into the next stuff. Chapter are we on? Seven? Oh yeah. Section sorry. There you go. We're still at seven three, seven four. to me is, is, in a sense, let me, let me show you what 7.3 does. Um, <coughs> okay. Now, if, if anybody does not like this approach that I've been taking so far, that I transform this into an equation and then solve, you do have another way to do this kind of problem. And let me put it up here. I think I asked this before. Has anybody ever seen that? <laughs> so let me give you an example. If I said 7 is what percent of uh, 10? So if I had 10 people in a room and seven of them were men, what percentage of men are in that room? If I had 10 people in a room, listen, if I had 10 people in a room and seven of them are men, what percentage of them are men? Seven out of 10, right? I did. So seven out of 10. So if I had 10 people in a room, Seven are men. What percentage are men? The first step, now you have to be careful. Seven out of 10 is so far so good. It's not seven out of 100, it's seven out of 10. So that's 0.7. Let me put a zero on there to help us out. What is that as a percentage then? 70%, because I want to go to percentage and move it up. Right. Because over here, what could I have done? Pop, pop. Uh, that makes sense. Did it just go pop, pop? Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> right. That would be 70% right there. Right there. I can make 10 into 100 very easily. Okay. So, what we just did, 7 is what percent of 10? That's really what this is asking, isn't it? 7 is what percent of 10? I don't like drawing the whole letter for some reason. 7 is what percent of 10? So it's the is. It's the part divided by the whole. We know that. To make a percentage, it's the part 7 out of the whole 10. So that's what this is really capturing. Part divided by whole is the percentage. And why is it divided by 100? Because it's going to come out to be some decimal. So I'm going to, of course, want to multiply by 100 to make that into a percentage. Now, if you have never seen this before and you don't like doing it this way, don't. Do not. I do have to show you this way just in case you do like it. Right? Some people like this way better than that way. So I have no problem with that. But if you don't like this, don't do it. So this whole section is about setting these proportions up. If you don't like it, do it that way. This is not better than that in any way. But if you do like this, do them this way. I love it. So to do this problem, 
What's is? What's the is number? Seven. 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 So is seven. What's the of number? Good. Of what? And what's the percentage? Fifteen out of one hundred. That's fifteen percent, right? And now you can cross multiply. You guys kind of with? Me? So I get. 700, 15x. Some of you guys might realize you could reduce here, but just attack it directly. And then, of course, the last step is almost always divide. Cool. Calculator trying to round it at the end because your calculator will only shows so many. This is seven because the next number is six, so it makes that last six is seven. Yep. How are we doing? We're doing okay. So again, if you do not like this way, do not do this way. Period. If you like this way, do this way. Either way, I don't care. They both get you there. They both are equally valid. And the damn thing wrong with the other one. If you do this, you get practice with proportions. If you do this, you get practice with equations. Unhappy either way. Right. If I were to do that with the equation way, what would it look like? Wait no. Um, what would that look like in the equation? That would be a what? Beautiful, right? You've got to move that decimal once, twice, back, move it down to get to the decimal. 0.15. Of what? Multiply. Good. Multiply by x, because I don't know what the hell it is. Is 7. And then you divide by 0.15. Real quick. If I move this over once, twice, I better move this one over once, twice. Don't I have the 700 over the same damn thing here? Yeah, ooh. So that they're really the same damn problem. They're exactly the same equation. They just don't look like it. So not surprisingly, you get the same answer. How are we doing? <laughs> An interesting <laughs> interjection like that. I have something to say. So how do we feel about that? I mean, I won't ask you, but if anybody likes this, you got this now. If anybody likes that, you got that now. You can now attack any problem that you can write with this phrase. It's easy to attack that problem. <coughs> so you might have expected this. And if you didn't, here it comes. The next section is all about percentage word problems. So let's try one out straight out of the homework. Uh, let's see. Let's do one more. Page 494. So on 7.3, we have to do it as a proportion then? Oh, 7.3? No, like I just said. You can get more practice with the equation method if you like that better. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing gained by forcing students to do it that way. It's just, it just doesn't have anything better. Um, so number 11 on page 494. So it says a furniture company, it's too early to speak. A furniture company currently produces 6,200 chairs per month. Uh, that's what I wrote. <laughs> if production decreases by 8%, so people just aren't coming in to buy chairs, they don't have time to sit around. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Production decreases by 8%. Find the decrease. And the number of chairs made now. So the whole point of these kind of word problems is if I can rephrase the word problem into this, I'm golden. Because then I can do the proportion or I can do the equation. So can somebody help me out? Can somebody rephrase this problem in this form? To an equation or into a proportion. How many of you guys, by the way, how many will do it this way? Anybody will do it this way? Okay. This way? Yeah. Not only you try it, but how many of you prefer this way? Okay, cool. So let's do this both ways. Um, to do it as a proportion, what's my is? Yeah, is what? What's my of? 6200. Now I hear somebody, so I'll, whoever's answering my questions there, you want to do the equation way probably. So the <laughs> is number is x, the of number is 6200, and then the percentage is obviously eight. eight. You guys with me? Okay. Now it's built into this setup that this becomes 0 .08. Don't make it 0 .08 and also divide by 100. Then you're doing 0.08%. Then you're going to make basically the same number of chairs as before. So there's going to be barely any decrease. So th to solve this, you would just start to cross multiply. Not a big deal. 100x equals. 49,600. Cool. Divide by 100, and that's an easy one. 496. Those so zeros just go away. Is that cool? So that's part A, that's the decrease. Decreased by 496. So how many chairs are they going to make now after the decrease? 496. Hmm? 496. Nope, they're not going to make only 496 chairs. That would be a huge decrease from 6,200. What is this number? 5,700. That's 8% of this. It's how many chairs less they want to make. So how many chairs are going to make now? 5,000. Yeah, 6,200 minus 496. Well, you were saying. That's my answer. What is that, 5,704? <laughs> yeah? 5,704. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Victoria had some coffee this morning. <laughs> yeah, just tea. Just tea. Just tea? Just tea. It has a just lot of sugar. Caffeine. No sugar. No sugar. All right. Something's going on. Um, now, how do I write this as, a, as an equation? So if you want to do it as a proportion, here's how the whole problem would look. You put the right things in the right place. You get that 496. Now, the other level of any word problem is do you understand what the hell that number is? That's not the number of chairs they're going to make now. That's the number of chairs less they're going to make. So you got to subtract it to figure out how many now. You with me? So it's sort of like if I put money in a bank and it's a 5% interest, I put $1,000 in there, 5% of 1,000 is 50, that doesn't mean I have $50 in my account. Thank God banks don't work that way. They seem to sometimes, but no. They're going to add that onto the $1,000 I had in there. 
So they take the percentage just to figure out the number that they're going to add or subtract to some other number. Here's the same idea. That number I got to subtract to get to where I am now. How would it look as, a, as an equation? 8% would be 0.08. 0.08 of times 6,200 is something. There you see. And then you just got to do that in the calculator. You're done. That per, that's why I personally enjoy the equation method better. It's just more direct. But there's not a damn thing wrong if you like it this way better. Nothing wrong with that. You can do this way. This is method one. Or method two. And incredibly enough, you get the same thing here, right? 496. This way. What if it was like 2.5? How do you like move the depth? Like, you know how you move the decimal twice on the point, uh, on the 8? What if it was like 2.5%? 2.5%, okay. Like, not just a point function, you know? So, wait a minute. So, that's 8%. I think I just did this in the equation. 2.5% sure. percent would be once, twice, 0.025. So, you could still, okay, yeah. So, again, it's the same idea as always. The math process does not care what's there. When you go from a percentage to a decimal and you move the decimal back twice, I don't care what the hell's there. That's how you do it. So if I had 0.0000003%, how to make that into a decimal? Move it back. So somebody's going to look at that and say, well, that's pretty damn small. I better move it that way because it's already really small. No. See, that number tells you what to do. You don't let the number tell you what to do. The process is move this thing back twice. So now I got 0.0000003. Good boy. Sounds like phone number. Okay. Just what it feels like the percentage of the economy has increased in the last month. Okay. Oh, here's a good problem from recently. Um, remember when the gas price was like 380, and then a couple days later it was 480? Yeah, I was driving by that like. Because <laughs> I hadn't heard about all the trouble and all. I had no idea. I'm like, what the hell? Well, Mesa's almost fine, but it's crazy. What percent increase is that? So how much did it increase by from year to year? So it increased by one dollar. So one dollar is what percent of 380? Because a percentage of this increased to get to there. So I'm trying to work backwards. It did increase by one dollar. I can see that, right? So one one dollar is what percent of 380? So then you just set it up like always. Oh, one is what percent of 380? And just divide that out. So it's going to be almost 30%, uh, I think, something like that. 28? I don't know. Somebody help me. into percentage, what is it? 26.3%. That's close to 30, isn't it? Give me a little leeway trying to do that in my head. Alright, so that's a, a, um, an example from our own lives. It's, it's almost a quarter uh, of a, uh, what am I trying to say? A quarter of 100%. No. It, it um, went up by almost a by a little more than 25% in a couple days. It's insane. And then, of course, it took it about a week and a half to come back down. Okay. So let's try another one of these. Yes. Uh, the 7 to 8 and page 494. Number 7 and 8? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's look at number 8 here. So in a recent year, 8% of films were rated PG. Yeah, 
if 725 films were rated, how many were rated PG? Lower than I thought it would be, but I don't really pay attention. So, can you rephrase that in that one line question? 8% of 725. Yeah, 8% of the films rated, so 8% of 725 is what? Can you guys see that? So the key thing here, back with the harder word problems, this is not nearly as hard as the first set of word problems we, we looked at. Back with the harder word problems, the first step was uh, what are the players and then what's X and so forth. Here, really, the first step is can you rephrase it here? Because then you're one step away from math. Right? Here's the English, and then it's one step away from the math, because now I can take this directly to a um, equation. Yeah, 8% 0.08 of 725, 725 is 58. what? Yeah. And you get 58. 58. When you multiply those out, so you can use your calculator to multiply those out. I think it's the other way. Okay, cool. So this is uh, one way to do it. The other way would be, what's my is number? X over my of. 725. My percentage, 8 out of 100. I like it. And then you just cross multiply. And I did it wrong. 56. 5,800, yeah. Divide by 100. Hey, look at that. 58. Sweet. guys, how are you doing? I mean, so these are word problems again. I and mean, whenever I say that, people kind of shudder and moan and groan and so forth. But these are nowhere near as bad as the first ones. If you can make it here, there's no ambiguity. You know exactly how to go either to the equation or to set up the proportion. Either way, everything's really defined. With the other problems, we had to define everything ourselves. Like, oh, crap. Let's try one more of these here. Oh, here's the one that's orange. Number uh, 26. So Banker learned that $842.40 withheld from his pay. If this represents 18%, Find his total pay. So this is kind of backwards. I know the part, this is the part of the whole, right? So you gotta be really careful how you rephrase this. So what do I not know in this case? I don't know the total pay. So the funny thing is right here, it tells you 18% of his total pay is what? This. Because he's saying this represents 18%. So this is this. How we do? So I don't want to take 18% of this. I don't want to do that. That would so suck. Because then he's making very little money. <laughs> right. You make like 160 bucks or something. A little bigger. Not enough to live on it. Definitely not here. So 80% of the bigger amount, the total pay, this is just the smaller amount, the amount that was withheld for taxes and stuff. This is how much was withheld of the bigger amount. So 18%, what would that be? 0.18 of the total pay, X, is the part of the pay that I see, the 842.40. 
So that's one way. If you did it the other way, it would be part 842.40 of, I don't know, so the of is the x, out of what is the percentage, oh Jeff, over 100. See, I thought it, I flipped 842.40 over x, I know. That happens a lot. Is this the part or the whole? That's the part. His total pay is way bigger than this. This is just the part that was withheld from his pay. That represents 18% of his total pay. So the bottom always has to be the total. And the top would be the part of that. Such for past you. Present you now understands that a little bit better. All right, so it does not suck going forward. You should use the concept. I tried to get ahead and I did it, and I was like, oh, I think I got so it. So how do I solve this equation? What do I do to both sides? You get x by itself? I've lost everybody. Damn. Sorry. How do I solve this? I divide by point. Yeah, divide by 0.18. I don't want the 0.18. Forty-six A. So that's his monthly pay. Sounds about right. It's almost sixty thousand a year. So that's about you know, what you'd expect somebody to be on average. Uh, over here, you would multiply. So eight forty-two to multiply by hundred. I just move the decimal. To solve this way, if you want to set it up like this, and then divide by eighteen. So not surprisingly, that comes out to be 4680. So as long as you understand one way or the other, if you don't understand either way, come see me. So here, you guys try to set up this one. I won't say anything. book doesn't underline what I did, so if I can help you out a little tiny bit there. when you take like a standardized test or you take a math test, you, a lot of times you'll find the numbers and you'll just pick an operation. So very often when you see percentages, you just want to 15% times this and just put that number down and keep going. Would that make any 15% of this would be kind of a small number, especially for the price of a house. That doesn't make any damn sense. The price of this house should be at least 100000 maybe, somewhere in that range. Alright. So we can go straight off of this. 
50% of what is this? That's the part, that's the whole. So 15% of home price is 26,250. So I make that into an equation. 0.15 good of times what I don't know X is 26,250. And then of course you just divide by the 0.15. Under seventy five thousand? That's like a quarter of what it costs. Okay, okay. You could find that. <laughs> Not in La Hoya. I don't think you could find that. That would be a room. In the garage. The garage, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, the Black Fonzie up in the garage. <laughs> So this is the one I think is going to give us the most trouble because we just naturally want to operate directly with the numbers they give us. This is kind of a weird problem because it's backwards. This is the result of doing 15% of something. So I can't take 50% of this. I've got to take 50% of the thing I don't know to get this. That's backwards. That always confuses the hell out of students. And that's actually, you'll actually go a little further in the next math class with that idea of being real careful about percentages. Sometimes you have to divide instead of multiply. Okay. too much of you reduce it. In fact, I'd rather not see that because sometimes people only put the reduced form and that sometimes means it came from a calculator as you figure out your fraction. But so I, I'd almost rather see the non-reduced form just so I can see directly that you got it from what you from what I gave you. Uh, but the book probably reduces it. Yeah. So if you try to reduce this, what definitely goes into both of these? Five. So five goes into that one. Uh, Fifty-five. And five goes into 120, is that cool? And what still goes into both of those? Five. 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 So five goes in there, 11, 
And the 20, see, that's what the book has, right? 11 over 4. So they just reduced that number. So if you got this, you're you're technically right. Right, but I just didn't know how to like write that like that because in my head I just know that's like two and three quarters. So that's like even better. Quarters. So another way to do this problem, a whole different way to do this, is how what does this look like as a decimal? With a decimal? Yeah. Times. Yeah. Times. So it'd be bam bam, 2.75? Yeah. yeah. Which is two and three quarters. Three quarters. Not a damn thing wrong with that. Oh. Yep. I just didn't understand how to write it. Like, you don't have to. You don't have to, no. They said as a fraction or a mixed number. And are these the same? 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. Thank God. There's so many answers. What's that? So many different ways. No, there's one answer. There's a lot of different ways to write that answer, but there's one answer on this problem. Not all of math is cut and dry, but this one cut and dry, just different ways you can represent it. Um, so is that cool? Does that help you with uh, the rest of them? So you're probably not wrong. You're just trying to force it to look the way the book has it. Yeah. Just work with it the way you put it. If, you, if this makes more sense, do it this way. There's not a damn thing wrong with this. This is awesome. And you're right. This is over 100%. So it's definitely going to be like a mixed number. It's going to be a top-heavy fraction at least. Because 100% is 1. Anything over that is now bigger than 1. That will automatically be an improper fraction or a mixed number. You're going to have some whole part and some fraction part. Cool. Anything else from Chapter 7 before we push a little bit into Chapter 8? I just want to do very little bit out of eight. I really hope you guys don't mind that. I have let you out early quite a while. I don't think you mind. Because okay. we're getting through the material. I just want to make sure that I'm not steamrolling everybody. But I think I stopped enough and asked you what's going on. Um, I don't think so. I can't remember that. Yeah, okay. And this is that we actually jump right into section 8.3. This is really to get us ready for the graphing that we're going to do. Math 90, there's some graphing. Math 103, 110, there's a lot more graphing. And if you have to go past that, there's a lot more graphing. So, on one level, you can ask, why? Why the hell do you math people got to graph everything? What's your deal? But if I have an equation for uh, throwing a ball, the really cool thing is the equation the equation would look something like this possibly. I'm going to freak you out for a second. So just stay with me. All right. So there's an equation for you. That could be an equation for me throwing a ball to somebody else. Believe it or not. If I graph that, now, please stay with me. We're not going to do this. You understand? I'm showing you a nice real-life example. Real life is always messier. So this is definitely a little messier than anything we're going to see. So if I'm standing here, 12 feet up, I'm standing on some top of some something, and I throw a ball, it's going to look like that, isn't it? Throw a ball. No, hopefully <laughs> throw a ball like that. So I throw the ball, and it goes up. and makes this arc and comes down. No big deal. That's exactly what this equation would do if I graphed it. So very often, by graphing an equation, I can see a visual, physical representation of what the hell's going on. Is that always true? No, because sometimes these equations aren't necessarily real physical things. But I can still, it could possibly be a profit function. That could be a profit function for a company. Where would I want to be? I'd want to be here, would I? If I get a visual of it, this is what you always see in the background of those, uh, uh, like a Dilbert cartoon or something. You see these charts, and normally the prophet is like, well, <laughs> right? But I, I say, okay, we got to figure out how to get here. We are currently here. How do we get there? And then that, what are, the, what's this variable? How can, can I change that variable? Can I, can I produce more? Can I do something to make this move here? You guys, semi with me? So there are definite 
real reasons why we want to graph functions. Yes, ma'am. For that one, you picked 12 up. You have negative 16x, so wouldn't it even go to That is actually, the neat thing about this equation is that is the, uh, that's the effects of gravity. So why does this curve back down is because of that negative x. So it starts off at zero. Now, you guys can do this. At zero, if I let x be zero, so it's like at time zero. Where's the ball? Zero, zero, 12. It's here. Then it starts to go up a little bit, but eventually this piece makes it go back down. It's negative. That's gravity pulling it back down. See, so that's the physical world represented in the equation. And then when I make the equation into a graph, it kind of comes back. Here's the equation in the physical world. It's kind of nice. Oh, cool. How are we doing so far? Yeah. Wait, wait, so that equation wouldn't actually be represented as that graph, right? Why not? Because uh, you said the negative 16 represents it coming down. Yeah, so it goes up a little bit, and then this eventually makes it come back down. Yeah, so what makes uh, it go? What, what, what's okay. making it go? I, I, guess, I guess I was thinking of the order of the, um, the way they were was like the sequence of the graph. But, uh, you got you. Yeah. All right. What's making it? Uh, would be this one. Point. This one will be making it go up. Another, another negative. Yeah. Let's not, again, oh, okay. focus on this. Right. Right. But real quick, if I made x 0, you're cool that it's up here at 12. If I make x, let me see if you guys are with me. If I make x 0 0.1, 0 0.1 squared is 0 0.01, then this piece is small compared to this piece. So that it does go up a little bit. That's not big enough negative to make it come down yet. But as x gets bigger and bigger, this piece will get more and more negative. It's eventually going to make it come back down. That's as much as I want to say about that, because that's definitely way beyond the math we should be doing. I just want to give you a little reason why we want to even look at graphing functions, graphing equations. OK, so that's way ahead of where we want to be. So the first thing is, how would I graph on just a number line? Graph x equal to 6. How would I graph that on a number line? So there's a number line. Minus 6, yeah. Put a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then on the 6, I would put a dot point, right? So there's 6. Now, this is the first thing we learned. You had some earlier problems where you had to find numbers on a number line. Amazing. This is not good for real life. Thankfully, in real life, we can't. We I can only go this way. I am born on this line, and it can only go on this line. That would so suck. Right? I really want to go in there, but it can only go left and right. So I want to be able to move, of course, left and right, and either up and down or forward and backward this way. Right? You with me? so that I can move at least two-dimensionally. So through the room, I can move on this line, and then I can turn and move this way up a little bit. Right? That would be useful. I'd be able to get somewhere. So that's the whole idea of adding in another dimension. So lines are one-dimensional. You only have one dimension, left and right. You can only move on this one thing. The minute I add in the this piece, now it's two-dimensional. Now I can cover like the whole floor. That'd be sort of like area. I can cover the whole floor. And if I add a third piece, which we definitely won't do in this class, you can now fill the room up, right? Because you can go to any point, and they go up to a certain amount. Fill the room up with water or something, right? OK. So now on top of this x number line, I'm going to add a y number line. And you hear it all the time about how this is like latitude, longitude. I personally don't like that as much as this is like going up to somebody's house. How many blocks over and blocks up do I have to go possibly? So if I live here and my friend lives there, I might have to go one, two, three blocks over and one, two, three, four blocks up. All right, so three blocks over, four blocks up, and then I get to my friend's house. So one way to represent that trip is how much I have to move on the x and how much I have to move on the y, like that. So his house would be located at the point 3, 4. 
So it's always x, y. How much you move on the x, how much you move on the y. Okay, so I know this is old news to a lot of you guys, so just enjoy it. For anybody else that hasn't done this in a long time or hasn't really